My name is David Lee Summers, and I'm reading from The Vampire of Ronick Moor, which is part of the anthology A Cry of Hounds. Dinella Stanton watched Scotland's rolling green hills and rocky outcroppings pass outside the window as the train clacked along the rails. She had already relaxed since leaving London, where she pursued her primary occupation as a spiritualist to society's elite and worked in the shops of Sloan Garden House when she needed extra income. People filled London's streets, and the city contained no shortage of lost and wandering spirits. Many spirits just seemed a little confused, as though they didn't quite know where to go. Others were pleased to hang around for a little while to assure themselves loved ones could get along in their absence. She believed she provided a valuable service to such spirits. However, the city also attracted darker spirits, ambitious beings from distant lands who wanted to possess living hosts to pursue their desires. Some such spirits were evil, others merely mad. She shuddered at the thought and looked out the window again. She had written to her friend Mary Ferguson, who lived in a village called Kinlachranach. They had attended Bedford College in London together. Mary studied maths and now kept the books for her husband's business. Dinella had studied languages, but also discovered her true calling at Bedford. Pitlachri, the conductor called as he strolled down the coach's aisle. The train blew its whistle and slowed beside a gray block building with slate tiles and window boxes filled with red and yellow flowers. Already, Scotland seemed much more pleasant than London. She gathered her bags from the rack above and went to the door. She took a moment to breathe in the air. Like all railway stations, the one at Pitlochry held a tang of machine oil, but she could smell grass and heather in the distance. She stepped off the train and glanced around. Mary waved at her. She held a baby who already had a shock of red hair. Dinella approached and put an arm around her friend. It's good to see you, and I see you've brought little Fiona along. I thought she would enjoy the trip and getting to meet her Auntie Dinella first thing, Mary smiled. She's still young enough that it's hard to leave her for the eight-hour round trip to meet the train. Eight hours? Dinella gasped. I knew Kinlochranach was remote, but I didn't think it was that remote. Mary winked. It is, so we'd best not stand here lollygagging. Let's get your bags on the coach. We have four hours before we get home, and then there'll be supper to cook. We plan to spoil ya with good highland cooking. Dinella quirked an eyebrow. That doesn't include haggisaw. Black pudding, does it? I hear it's made from pig's blood. Don't knock it until you tried it. Mary led the way to the waiting coach. The coachman took Dinella's bags and secured them to the roof, then opened the door for the two women. Within a few minutes, they rode through the village's streets to a road leading into the boggy grasslands of Rannoch Moor. Dinella took a deep breath, enjoying the scents of heather and grass untainted by machine oil. The baby, Fiona, began to fuss. Please excuse me a moment, Mary said. With only Dinella present, Mary unbuttoned her blouse and then unbuttoned one side of her nursing corset. The baby latched on to Mary's breast and soon quieted. I really do appreciate your hospitality, Dinella said, and I hope I'm not imposing. After all, you've come a long way to get me. Mary shook her head. You're not imposing at all, and I needed some time out of the house, her brow furrowed. I only hope this doesn't prove to be a bad time for a visit, though. Dinella narrowed her gaze. Is something amiss? It's just... Four men disappeared from the village over the last week. What's more, some of the farmers who work the land near the house say they've seen the Kushi in the distance. Kushi? 
What's a kushi? Dinella tapped her fingers on the seat beside her. Although she had studied languages, she knew little Scots Gaelic. The kushi is a ferocious green dog. Its eyes glow yellow, and it's the size of a cow or an ox. They say if you're out on the moors and you hear it bay, you must run. If it bays a third time, the hound will strip you of your soul and send you to the land of the fae.